and ended up singing for Jennifer Lopez and Harry Connick Jr. and Keith Urban. Ended up making it to Hollywood Week, which was insane. It's probably more insane than it is on television, actually. Um, and I ended up making the top 48 out of about 200,000 singers. <laughs> Welcome back to the future of pickleball. On this podcast, we talk with the movers and shakers in the sport, people that are coming through the sport, having a great time, and they have visions and ideas about where the sport's going to go in the future. Today's guest, Zach Taylor, is kind of a new face in the sport. Very, very interesting background. I'm going to want Zach to get into that. Let's start with Zach. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for having me. Great so. So I met Zach, oh, about a year ago in, as, he was, as he was escalating up through the skill set and aiming towards pro. Yeah. What interested me, and I was really intrigued when I met him, is Zach comes from a pretty extensive entertainment background. Major tennis player in his background, and he's now playing the pro game. Zach, tell us a little bit about the entertainment thing, that that's really unique. Yeah, well, first of all, yes, we met in Colorado, Denver, and when I saw the big shiny van that you drive around the country, I was like, I have to talk to him. Uh, so we kind of just came from a natural meeting place, I feel like. We kind of just collided. Um, but I, you know, before pickleball and before tennis ever started, I was a singer. I sang and entertained my family in the living room since I was a little kid. I was in choir um, all throughout elementary, middle, and high school. Eventually, I joined an all-male acapella group in college where we toured the country and around the Midwest and kind of sang to recruit other people to sing. Um, and then real life hit me. I graduated from college, and I took a big boy job in a corporate office, and I said, wait, this is not for me. <laughs> I said, I'm too creative. I've been creative my whole life. I've been an athlete my whole life. And I was like, I have to find something else to do to you know, take the time away from me staring at a computer all day long. So. I, while I was on my, actually my first week on the job, I think, I auditioned for American Idol. I signed up online um, to punch a ticket to get to audition for, for the show. And they were actually holding auditions in my hometown of, uh, or my college town of Springfield, Missouri. Kind of near Branson, if you've ever heard of Branson. Um, and I went down there and I auditioned with one of my fraternity brothers. He, he played guitar and harmonized and I was the main vocal. And we had had some, some uh, fun experiences doing that with all the sororities around our campus. That was oh, really, I can imagine. really how we kind of found a name for ourselves was the sorority girls loved when we would sing. So yeah. we teamed up together, sang on like uh, the bus tour that American Idol had had at the time. So I think there was like a thousand people that waited in line to sing in front of the producers of the show. And I was lucky enough to get one of the golden tickets to Hollywood. They chose 17 of us from that line of a thousand. Um, and I just kept auditioning. I had four or five rounds actually before television starts. A lot of people don't realize that what they see on TV yeah. in the celebrity judges round is actually four or five auditions in. Okay. So I had auditioned on the bus tour. Then I had two more auditions with executive producers and another camera test. And then I went in for the judges. Very cool. Um, and I ended up singing for Jennifer Lopez and Harry Connick Jr. and Keith Urban. Ended up making it to... Um, to Hollywood Week, which was insane. It's probably more insane than it is on television, actually. Um, and I ended up making the top 48 out of about 200,000 singers. So that kind of catapulted my, my love for, OK, this is, I legitimized myself in, this, in the craft that I had been working on my whole life. And that kind of got the wheels turning of where I am today. And since, since my uh, American Idol, I've done uh, national anthem performances for major league stadiums. and. I was on another show on ABC called Boy Band, so it's kind of snowballed into yeah. But it all started back, I think, you know, when I auditioned for American Idol. Well, and the thing that I found so cool when I met you, and I had never met anybody who had begun to have that kind of a track, but the fact that you were now, I mean, I saw you play from the beginning, and I knew you had an elite skill level. Um, but it was fun then in introducing you to Selkirk yep. and having them and, you know, they've really, they've really lit up to you and you've been on stage. You're a speaker, you're a spokesman and Selkirk is just, I know they've got great plans for you and what can be happening yeah. uh, with them helping to grow their brand and you along with it. Um, segue for a moment into your, where did you find pickleball and yeah. how did that start to really erupt? Sure. 
Um, well, like a lot of people that play pickleball now, a lot of us found it during the pandemic. Um, I was a very high level tennis player for a long time. I was a top junior in the United States for a little while. Um, and I knew like, I really just kind of wanted to have the college experience and not really commit my entire life to tennis anymore because I wasn't going to be a professional tennis player at the end of sure. the day. Um, so I went on that path of entertainment, but I was living in Los Angeles at the time of the pandemic and everything shut down. Um, so I ended up actually moving back home to my hometown of Kansas City and had nothing to do. <laughs> I was out of a job and I was just, you know, playing tennis for fun at that point. But a couple of my neighbors down the street where I'm from invited me out to play one time. And, and I thought it was so silly. What is this sport on a miniature tennis court? Like yeah. I'm a tennis player, so it was hard for me to transition. And the moment I hit the ball with the paddle, I just knew. <laughs> I think I, it was just part of... You know, I think a lot of people can relate. You're, it's the best addiction that anyone could have. You just There's something about pickleball and the community and the camaraderie above the sport that makes you want to play. So actually, my neighbors down the street had introduced me, and there was a, a lady there that was also at the public courts that saw me play. And again, take into perspective, I have no idea what the rules are yet. This is my first day playing pickleball. Yeah. I'm just taking what I know from tennis and transferring it to pickleball. Yeah. And she had came up to me and asked if I wanted to coach for her. And I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I, I don't even know what the part in the, in the front of the net is called. So uh, sure, I would love to try, but I don't know anything yet. And she's like, well, why don't you come? I'm, I'm holding a clinic in two days time. And why don't you just come and observe and see if it's something that you'd like to do? And I came and she actually threw me in with about 32 players just to kind of test my skills and my and my people skills and it ended up working out and everything you know the rest is kind of history there oh very yeah. fun very cool indeed one of the things that i was anxious to get you on our podcast here about the future of pickleball is you really are sort of the quintessential representative of now where your generation and, and young adults your age are coming into this sport and rocketing through it from what you've seen so far, and it's been a fast track, yeah. what do you see happening, both for yourself, but for the sport? How do you see this thing developing with your generation? I would say, I mean, pickleball is exploding. And not only in, in like the United States, it's starting to explode around the world. And we're seeing now a lot of the college tennis players, the high level college tennis players coming straight out of their college career and right into professional pickleball. So for the pro game specifically, it's going to only get tougher and tougher as these young kids come into, into the sport. You know, I had a, probably about a four year gap between my college and my pickleball journey that kind yeah. of, I kind of, my competitive juices kind of took a back seat for a little bit, a little while. And there, those types of players are going right from being competitive in tennis to right to being competitive in pickleball. So I think the transition for them has been a lot smoother, but you know, the future of the sport is, is astronomical it's scary to think about where this sport's going to be in five years time and and how the pro tours and how the amateur level events are going to actually look it's kind of you know i can't even think about it cool so much is happening so fast right now that i don't know when there's no end in sight which is positive for the sport well it is and 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 you know that really brings me to the point so you're currently uh uh, uh teaching and running pickleball yeah. and i don't know the facility that you're at yeah so i'm at the beverly hills tennis center and, right, right in Beverly Hills. And so, and so what has that experience been like, being in Beverly Hills coaching pickleball? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's a dream to, be, to live in Beverly Hills and play pickleball for a living. I mean, I kind of have to remind myself that I get to hit a wiffle ball over a net for a living and, <laughs> and make a very, very good living doing it. Um, but I would say coaching is, is all people skills. And you, you and know is just as well. You talk to a lot of people all the time. So if you have good people skills and and can you know help them visualize certain things like that's really what makes a great coach and i would say you know i waited tables for five years in between while i was trying to make it as and singing and acting so i was i learned how to talk to anyone and i think to become a good coach you have to know how to talk to people and find a way to talk to them to where they understand because every player is different some players are more technical and mechanical in, in their strokes and want to know the exact way to hit it and other players just need a visualization of something to think about while they're hitting the ball. Sure. So I have kind of taken my entertainment background of camera work and knowing how to you know, address a camera and talk to people from my serving life and kind of, it just kind of came together. I didn't even know I was a good coach, but I guess I just loved it. And you know, my parents used to always say, find something that you're passionate about. 
and everything else will follow. And I didn't really realize what they meant until yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, coaching in Beverly Hills has been great. We're, our program is relatively new, like a lot of the ones around the country. So a lot of the players are just learning the sport and the rules. Um, and But to see their rise so quickly is always just a, such a great feeling as a coach. Very cool. So now let's think about you as a guy about 30, um, your network, your thank friends. Thank you for about 30, yes. Well, just turned 30, but yes. All right. <laughs> so I know thank it was you. Close. I appreciate it. But, but so now what are you finding in terms of your your group, your gang, your age, uh, people a little younger, a little older, but they're really in the, in the thrust of adulthood. How is pickleball starting to factor into this? I mean, are we talking about like for the professional level or the no, amateur level? No, I'm thinking of just, just the people social people you meet in general. Where I mean, uh, the professional game is great to talk yeah, about, but right. it's about 1% of right, the players exactly. that play the game of pickleball. Exactly. And, uh, and um, uh, you know, I'm thinking really in terms of just what do you see with your social group right. of folks that are just hearing about it yeah. and giving it a try? I would say a lot of my friends know about pickleball through me because when you are a pickleball player, you talk about pickleball all the time. Yeah. All of my friends are now, all of my closest friends are now pickleball people. Yeah. Um, people I, I interact with are all pickleball people. So they hear me talk about it a lot. And I think, you know, pickleball has kind of exploded on the social media side of things, which is where a lot of my age demographic and younger lives. So when they see it pop up on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, those kind of things, uh, you're starting to see a lot younger generation come into the sport. And I think it's partly because of the social aspect of it and everyone can play. The barrier to entry is not a lot for an amateur player. You know, someone could pick up a paddle for $25 and a wiffle ball and start to play. So, you know, I think it's just going to continue to get younger and younger and yeah, that's kind of what I think about that. And now, so at the Beverly Hills Club, yeah. are you seeing many younger players? <laughs> is it mostly older players? What do you see there? Beverly Hills is rooted in old traditions. So I would say that most of the players that come in are above 50. So our age demographic is a little bit different because we are also competing and working alongside the tennis um, side of things because it's a 16 court tennis facility. So most of the tennis players, you, there's a junior program happening. There is not a junior program happening in pickleball yet. So Beverly Hills demographic is mostly 50 plus. But you are kind of seeing, you know, I teach a lot of moms and grandmas, and you will see that their children and their grandchildren are now coming in to take oh, lessons nice. from me because nice. their grandmas and their moms are talking about it so much, and their dads too. So. Well, it's going to be interesting uh, in what I do here with the Future of Pickleball's podcast um, I meet the people who are really making things go. There are some moves that are getting ready to start to happen in the juniors youth program yeah. that will replicate Pop Warner football, will replicate Little League baseball yeah. and organized basketball that I think we'll see another massive surge of eight to 16 year olds starting to come in through a new channel of sports yeah. marketing. And I think, you know, one way to do that really is the curriculum of the PE class. You know, it's very easy to put a couple of pickleball courts together in a gym sure. class and to get kids from, you know, about eight years old with a paddle in their hand and a wiffle ball because it's much easier for them to, to swing a paddle and hit a wiffle ball than it is to swing a full size tennis racket. Sure. And I know there have been some, some, you know, things happening with kids size equipment for pickleball to get them enter, you know, entered into the sport. So I think, you know, having, you know, middle schools and high schools offer that as a curriculum as part of the PE course would it actually benefit. When I was taking high school courses, badminton was our six week course for a little bit. And we played a version of pickleball. It wasn't, I don't think it was called pickleball when we played, but I think that would be one way to really get the youth involved. Um, you're also seeing, you know, college teams now putting together pickleball teams. I think there was an NCAA right. header against two of the bigger colleges around. So you're seeing it and it's and it's happening and it's happening very quickly. But I think having it in the school curriculum for PE, I think was really gonna help the sport grow on the younger side. Cool. So now in the future of pickleball, in the future of Zach Taylor, yeah. um, what's been your take of playing at the highest levels in the game? What are you finding? Yeah, I would say, you know, I have very humble beginnings in pickleball. Not a lot of people know. I started at 4.0, and my very first tournament was indoors on a hardwood floor. And if you've ever played on a hardwood floor, it's a little bit difficult to play pickleball on a hardwood floor. And the ball was an indoor ball. Yeah. Um, and my partner was 67 years old playing mixed doubles. So I came from very humble beginnings, and 
And um, that's how I honestly got introduced to Selkirk because the lady that I played with was an ambassador for the for the brand. Very and, nice. Uh, and I've just been with Selkirk ever since because they're so amazing to work with. But for the future of pickleball for me, in a perfect world, which I'm trying to next year for my goal to be to play a lot more. You know, coaching is amazing and it's addicting and people need me sometimes. <laughs> I get a lot of messages all the time of can I take a lesson and, and I'm very busy. But there's also the side of me that wants to further the brand of Zach Taylor. And that is that is through sponsorships and, and showing myself at events at big tournaments. So um, for me, the rise from 4-0 to pro has happened fairly quickly. I've been playing the sport for a little over two years. Um, at the professional level, I've been playing for a couple months and I've had some great success. But now you're seeing, you know, to compete against the top players in the world, you're going to have to put the work in. Right. And right now, I'm spent, I spend so much time coaching, which I love. But I think there's going to become a point in the next couple months where I will have to flip the coin a little bit and start to focus on my own game, whether it's drilling, higher level rec play, um, to kind of elevate myself and feel like I belong when I get to some of these tournaments. Sure. Well, I remember when I met you, we were in Colorado, yeah. and you triple crowned at 5-0. <laughs> yeah. And so so the, the escalation was pretty quick and pronounced. It, you know, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, and, and I will say I had a lot of success in 5-0, many triple crowns around the, around the country. Um, but the, the jump from 5-0 to pro is a totally different game. And I would say, you know, if you're watching this and you are a 5-0 player wanting to know the difference, the difference is, you know, the ball that you're putting away in 5.0 is coming back in the professional <laughs> game. So when you're transitioning from that high level 5.0 to a professional tournament, those balls that you think, those volleys that you're putting down at the player's feet, it's coming right back over the net. Yeah. So, and I had to train myself to be ready for one more ball, but I think, yeah, I played 5.0 for enough time and had some great success, and now I'm gonna continue to do that in the pro level. Very cool. Well, Zach, I want to say thank you so much for spending time with thank us. You, Paul. This has been cool. Uh, you guys keep an eye on Selkirk TV. This man is going to start showing up more and more often. And uh, it's been great fun. Thank you thank so you. much for joining us. Thank you so much, Paul. You bet.